Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today let's talk about a huge issue in Microsoft Flight Simulator that actually messes up a lot of your landings. And the issue I'm talking about is the incorrect glide slope indications and incorrect puppy indications that we see in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's have a look at the current example. We're here in an Airbus A320 and we are over the landing runway threshold of runway 23 left at Dusseldorf Airport. Now, at the vast majority of instrument runways, you're supposed to cross the landing threshold at an altitude of 50 feet. Crossing it at an altitude of 50 feet is going to provide you with sufficient capabilities to flare the airplane and then touch down right on the aiming point, which on this runway are those markers we see right over here, just in front of the puppy. Now, you will say, well, this doesn't look too bad, does it? And let's have actually a look inside the cockpit. This is what it looks like inside the cockpit right now. As we can see, the approach is totally over the place. Now, our puppy looks kinda okay, giving us two whites and two reds, but have a look at the glide slope. We're actually a dot and a half below the glide slope, and the radio altimeter indicates 70 feet. Now, as I said earlier, over the landing runway threshold we need to be at an altitude of 50 feet. At least that is the case for the vast majority of instrument approach runways. There are some differences and those are normally published in the approach charts. So let's quickly check the chart for the approach that we are currently flying. This is the ILS approach, runway 23 left at Düsseldorf Airport in Germany. And if we go all the way down to the bottom of the charts we have this little number up here, TCH50. This is the threshold crossing height of your pilot's eyes. So the eyes of the pilot is supposed to cross the threshold in 50 feet. Now there is a little bit of a debate on whether the main wheels of the airplane or the eyes of the pilot should cross the threshold at 50 feet. However, regardless which of the two values you take, in either case you end up with the aircraft being incorrectly positioned in Maxa Flight Simulator. Now, once again, as I've shown you earlier, we are currently over the threshold. We are pretty much exactly above it, as we can see. In the worst case, we could even say we are a little bit behind it already, because the tailplane is over the threshold right now. But if we look into the cockpit, we are a dot and a half below the glide slope, and we are still 20 feet higher than we are supposed to be. Now, take a rough guess if we will be able to do a good landing out of this position or not. Well, I can tell you from this particular position already that we will never be able to make a smooth landing out of this. If I would see what I'm seeing right now, in these conditions, I would call for a go around in real life. Now imagine if we were just about on the glide. I can tell you where we'd normally be, in about 100 feet, because I've messed landings up on this runway over here so often in the simulator because of the incorrect glide slope crossing height. Also, now you might say, okay, so just disconnect your autopilot and go below the glide slope, which is basically what I've done when I'm capturing this. And the only problem with that is that especially the Airbus is going to give us a glide slope warning as we are so far below the false glide slope that we are indicating in this scenario. And this is going to overrule the radio altimeter which is going to remove flare guidance from us and thereby we are doomed to make a bad landing out of this approach. And there is something we can do about it which is clicking the GPWS glide slope mode to off. If this is off we are not going to get the acoustic glide slope warning, thereby at least we get the correct radio altimeter callout. But why don't we just about go ahead and fly this landing all the way to the end and then see what is about to happen out of this approach. I can already tell you the results, but let's go ahead and actually fly this. Fifteen, forty, thirty, twenty. 30, 20, retard, retard. 
and down we are. As we can see, an absolutely messed up landing. We, cr we crossed the aiming point at 20 feet of altitude, which would have been a sure indication that this is an unstable approach. Now, why is this a huge problem then? Well, the primary reason is that in real life we look at the chart, we look at the threshold crossing height and then we know how the picture on the approach is going to be. In these indications, imagine coming in for a low visibility landing. The particular approach we're currently looking at, or the particular ILS, is approved all the way down to a category 3B Autoland, that is an RVR of 75 meters. With an RVR of 75 meters, you aren't gonna see anything on the landing, and the ILS is so messed up. Now you might say, well, but you're using add-on scenery over here to capture that video, and you might not be showing us the true picture of what it looks like in Maxa Flight Simulator. Well, the answer is quite simple. You can do this with the default Düsseldorf Airport. You can do this with so many airports, regardless if they are default or add-on in Maxa Flight Simulator, and are still going to end up with the same problem. Now, for the sake of completeness, let's switch to another approach. This time we're going to fly to Cologne from Aerosoft, which actually has a correct glide slope indication on the approach. So let's go over and do that. 100 above. Checked. Minimum. Continue. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. 5. Okay, spoilers, reverse green, decel. Okay, so let's go back once more and view the situation again. This is the picture we have crossing the threshold here at Cologne at an altitude of 50 feet. Now, as you can see on the glide slope scale on the primary flight display over there, we are currently actually almost half a dot above the glide slope. And we are showing two whites, two reds on the parpies, but you can see where the aiming point is. And this actually leaves us time to flare our airplane for the landing. Now, arguably enough, I did overflare the plane a little bit in order to achieve a perfectly smooth touchdown, which is not ideal piloting technique. So I touched down a little bit late, but as you can see, it would have been no problem to flare the airplane from this point in the approach and actually touch it down right on the marker with a decent rate of descent. Now, that is not the case in a lot of airports here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that is the reason why for any approach in the Airbus I meanwhile turn off the glide slope warning part of the GPWS so that it doesn't override my radio altimeter in case I decide to go below the glide slope in order to achieve a proper threshold crossing height on my manual landings and thereby achieve a proper touchdown and deceleration. Now, the problem that we've previously seen in Düsseldorf is especially going to be much of a problem when we come in for an auto land in actual CAT 3 conditions. Now, the entire approach lighting system and the entire runway lights are designed so that we can see them by the time we reach the minimum in case the RVR is what it is supposed to be, which for a category 3B approach is 75 meter and for a category 3A approach where we actually need to see the runway at 50 feet is designed to be 200 meters RVR. Now imagine you have an ILS like the one we had in Düsseldorf earlier on that is about 50 feet higher than what it is actually supposed to be. It means that you are not going to see the landing runway by the time you overfly your minimum and or the minimum is just going to be further down the runway so you actually have less landing runway available than you're supposed to have. In either case, be it an automatic or manual approach, we have seen how this can lead to severe problems by either destabilizing your landing on the very short final where it should absolutely not happen or in case of an actual approach in IMC even something worse. Now this is a problem that I talked about with a couple of the Asobo people already 
about a year ago, who however have insisted to me that MSFS does not have any such problem. Now, I let the video and the first landing and approach in Düsseldorf speak for themselves there if there is a problem or not in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I do certainly believe there is one with the ILSs and in my opinion it is quite a severe problem that causes us a lot of problems on our landings and that actually makes a lot of our landings worse than what they would have been if we had a perfectly stable final approach. Now I'm going to sign off with this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have found this one interesting. Do certainly let me know your own experience with how you have encountered the problem or not encountered it and if you think that this is the problem or is not. I'm very much looking forward to re read from you but for now thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again hopefully very soon.